Hello, I'm Luke Darcy. Welcome to Access All Areas. Grand final week is upon us. It's the Hawks and the Dockers. Can't wait for the grand final. It's going to be great. Damo, I know you tipped Fremantle at the start of the year and you've insisted we talk about it off the top. I'm assuming you're sticking, sticking with them uh, now. They were incredible in the prelim on Saturday night. They were, Darcy, weren't they? It was a demolition job on the Swans, wasn't it? Forget the margin. It was as good as a 12-goal win. And I reckon when you take that form into a, into a grand final coming off that in a prelim, yeah, it's, as, it's, it's a Fremantle victory coming up Saturday, does. Most extraordinary tackle pressure that I've ever seen in the game, Damo. Almost unprecedented the way that they were able to go about it. And uh, this is their highlight from the first half. It's relentless. It's almost uh, uh, an avalanche of, of just every player buys into what Ross Lyon wants them to achieve. And you know, the Sydney players have been the masters at this demo for a decade. It's won them grand finals. Yep. Well, they were uh, shell-shocked. Couldn't cope with it. Does It's almost the mentality and the mindset of this group of players is that they'd almost rather lay a tackle than kick a goal, isn't yeah. it? It's a strange way for a group of footballers to be. I mean, Chris Mayne in, in that shot there, it, he has way more tackles than he does, does goals. But he, he seems to get more excitement and, and worth to the team by doing it that way. I mean, you mentioned before, too, Daniel Pearce does. I mean, he's a, an extraordinary talent in itself, but he's now doing the Ross Lyon thing. He hadn't laid a tackle, Daniel Pearce, for about five years. And now, if you want to play in the Dockers' side, you lay tackles and they uh, do it with a great style and the crowd buys into it. Yep. They, they, they celebrate a tackle uh, more than a goal, the Fremantle supporters. I love it. Look at these numbers in the, in the first half. Almost double the dis disposals, more than double the marks, double the clearances, more than double the inside 50s. Contested possession, that is unbelievable numbers. Contested marks. I mean, you can uh, leave the second half aside, Damo, because they put the queue in the rack and they were eyeing off the grand final, but uh, it was one of the most comprehensive displays I've ever seen. One word, do they win the grand final? Well, I, I'm, I'm warming to them. I, I think sitting here now, Fremantle can 100% beat Hawthorne in, in the grand final, and I, and I, I think they will. One of their weapons, and they've got a many weapons, is Ryan Crowley and what he does. We, we saw on the weekend what he did to Kieran Jack, and it was... It was a, an ex a great performance from him. He's not afraid to pick apart the psyche of good players who don't shirk issues. But on this occasion, he's telling Jack there that he had a little short one and ducked the head. And you have to admire Ryan Crowley because he has got the mental toughness and the capacity to go and do this. And I love this little bit of light play. And yeah, Kieran, that one bounced over your head. We all know that Kieran Jack doesn't take a backward step, but he gets them. And he got another scalp again on the weekend. Only he just racked them up all year. Only had six possessions in the first half, Kieran Jack, and completely took him out of the game. What's he do against Hawthorne, Dust? Well, I think this one's no surprise. He'll go to Sam Mitchell. I know Ross Lyons mentioned Isaac Smith and Luke yep. Hodge, but 100% he'll it's go to Mitchell. Straight to Mitchell. Yeah, and Mitchell is the one that you want to stop. He had 38 possessions a season high in the prelim final and it's going to be enthralling to see if Ryan Crowley can get hold of him as well. Does Hodge have to come across and sort that out or does Guir have to come across Look, and sort I, that out? I know you'll be, I'll be being accused of being a bit uh, archaic here and going back to the old days but it has to be part of your strategy to have uh, Sam Mitchell blanketed by Ryan Crowley is a disaster for Hawthorne Grand Final Day. Now if you get a chance I reckon Guerra, I reckon Lewis, yeah. I reckon Hodge, you'd be saying running past me at one stage and I'll see if I can take the wind out of his sails, take him off his game a little bit because you have to fight back. So you're, you're saying to hit him as hard as you can and, and well, you don't want to make stuff away, the rules. You want to give away free kicks demo and you don't want to go outside the rules but it's Grand Final Day and uh, you can't allow uh, Ryan Crowley to mentally get the edge on, on your best player who's in the best form of his, uh, okay. his career. So I, I would absolutely think... And I, I'm not being over the top here. I think they would have... Do you dress it as a, as a team or do you go up to Hodge and say, listen, fix this by No, down? you dress it as a team. I mean, Alistair the Clarkson's in on the deal. style hasn't exactly been a, uh, a shrinking violet, Alistair Clarkson. And I'm not talking about gratuitous violence, but if you, you, you can't ignore the fact that Ryan Crowley has been absolutely demolishing opposition players. I mean, he took Kieran Jack, the captain, out. You would just be saying, hey, let's serve it up to him if there's a chance is that, is that the one thing they have to do going Not the one game. thing, no. There's a lot no. of things, but it's one. I mean, imagine the psychological advantage if uh, Ryan Crowley finds himself a little unsettled, looking over his shoulder, a bit distracted, and Mitchell has 10 possessions in the first quarter, kicks a couple of goals. That is a massive advantage. I, I think they have to yep. look at it. Thus, they're wearing the, the predominantly white strip against the Hawks in this grand final. You love the purple plays. I'm staggered by this, and there's some mixed messages. The AFL have tweeted out and said, we've told them they have to wear the white shorts. I'm not even sure why they have to do that. Purple doesn't clash with brown and gold. I'm, I'm not a colour expert, Damo, but you know anyone can understand that. Their whole brand is the purple haze. Their whole, you know, they painted the town purple. They've got purple sausages in Fremantle. There's a purple convoy <laughs> coming over for Fremantle. And they end up being white jumpers. It doesn't make sense. You know, you look back on grand final right? let's assume they win it. What are the images going to be? Some white jumper that, you know, our kids watching the game, they yep. won't recognise Fremantle. Everyone identifies with a purple. That's their brand. 
Someone step in. Someone yeah. make sure they were the perfect. Does uh, the, swim, the Swans, is their premiership window now shut on the back of the Dockers, almost superseding them as the hard nut team? I'm not sure you uh, wipe uh, Sydney out. You do that at your own peril. They're such a good club. And look, they had uh, six or seven of their best yep. players out of that side. Sam Reid comes back in. Uh, Reece Shaw, you know, severe injury with a knee. Kurt Tippett didn't play. Some pretty big mitigating circumstances. And they fought it out right to the end, as Sydney always do. So, look, I, I think they'll be uh, right amongst it again next year. You back them in. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure. I'm not going to say, say they're flag favourites, but you'd be foolish to think that they could make the top four next year. Um, it was under Geelong like in the dying moments of this game on Friday night against Hawthorne Dust, wasn't it? We see here um, Bartel barrelling a torpy with, as you can see, five minutes left and only three points of difference. Duncan, on this occasion, going for the big torpy. They've done it in the past, Dust, but what they've always done is show composure at the key moments like this was. And yet, Chris Scott, after the game, lamented the fact that they were playing like this when uh, history this year had been... Much more smarter. Yeah, it was very under long like, wasn't it? Uh, the way they did that, and it was an element of panic in it. And on yep. a prelim final, with that sort of pressure and, and and you know that amount of noise in the stadium, you could just see. And I think they might have just thought there was less time on the clock. You would have thought someone would have got out there, particularly after the first torp, and said, "Hey, we have got more time." And you know, it was a couple of key moments, and that's what prelim finals and big finals are all about. You've got to nail the, the big moments, and they just didn't quite get it right uh, at the key moments. The uh, siren went to us, and no one heard it. And the, um, the AFL has dodged a bit of a bullet on this. You can see here Rioli take the ball, and the siren goes right now. So, effectively, play finished. Now, no one's heard it. Thankfully, Hawthorne is the team with five points in front on this occasion. Does had they been five points down and that happened, they're all held a broken loose. Yeah, it's a it's a concern, isn't it? I mean, you should be able to have a siren loud enough that uh, you know can go over the top of a, of a big crowd. But you're right, that could have been a disaster. And I know the umpires are mic'd up and they can get word down, but by the time that happened, you know, five or six seconds ha has elapsed. And Dave, I reckon they've got another issue that I, I think they need to sort out before Saturday, yep. and that is the understanding that when there is 95,000 players can't hear. So that was a mark that was actually paid and probably should have been paid a mark. Now, Sirioli can't hear it. So he looks up and thinks, hey, let's play on. So he fires out a handball. Surely there's a common sense element that goes, no, the mark was paid, Cyril. Go back and take mm. your mark. And, and the advantage rule that they decided to change where the player takes responsibility for play on, it's not working. The players can't hear the whistle and they're getting called to play on when they're not trying to. And, uh, and I think it's just something they should fix out. It's, it's another rule change, Damo. You know I'm big on it that it hasn't yeah. worked. And they, should, they should sort this one out. What about the prelims, Dar? So we, we look back to 2008 and look at the uh, statistics here which suggest to us that the team that has the easier prelim final goes on to win the grand final. That's since 2008. Um, do you take anything out of that going into this week's game? Oh, it's interesting. There's five years of history there that, that suggests that's the case, isn't it? And uh, on that form line, Fremantle are the ones. There's another school of thought that says, you know, Hawthorne got this great, you know, test. They had five of their best players, Buddy, Cyril, Roughhead, Hodge, who probably didn't have their best ever finals. That sparks them into action and they go on and win it. But uh, you, know, you wouldn't underestimate Fremantle's form either. Yeah. Darcy, so Birchill got Stokes on the weekend. It seemed pretty fair. No dramas, I wouldn't have thought from match review perspective. But uh, Stokes, he was clearly winded. And um, we'll have a look here. He doesn't like what the trainer <laughs> getting in his face does. <laughs> look, I understand this. You know, the wind knocked out. You can't get in the air and you've got someone that close to you. Hey, mate, get out of my space. I'm I'm going to be OK. I'll feel better if you're not uh, two inches away. Just a little bit of uh, personal space there for Matty Stokes. So no problems with me. OK, you reckon the Swans hang on or at least uh, are thereabouts again next year? What about the Cats? they got some really interesting decisions to make for me and Paul Chapman's going to be a really tough one because he's declared he wants to play on, kick four goals and then was suspended and looks as though he could. But you know, I don't think Chris Scott will have any emotion around it. Does Joel Corey play on is another one. You know, their list has got great talent coming through. I'm, I'm not sure if they are right at their all-time you know, next year, but once again, that is a perfectly managed club that's got great talent around them, and everyone who comes in just seems to play a lot. They're you know, more experienced players than their games would yep. suggest. Does, uh, Michael Walters has got a bag of tricks like few have. He, he even shows them when he doesn't need to. <laughs> this is a pirouette. Look at Heath Grundy's looking going, oh, mate, just kick it. I don't uh, want to go anywhere near that. It's a full pirouette with Grundy just standing there. He is a magician, uh, uh, Michael Walters. I love the way he plays. Another Ross Lyon success story. Ross sent him away for six weeks, yeah. told him to sort his life out. 
Now he's you know, arguably the best small forward in the game and he will be a real, real threat grand final day. Dustin Martin's been in the news and I really liked last week how he decided to take you on, you enjoyed on that, social you? media. Did he yeah. called you a Larry? And, and you know what I think the definition of Larry is? That's a tosser and that's what we all think it is. But the Urban Dictionary, as we said last week, you think it's got something else? I think he uh, was paying great respect to me personally, but uh, I'm not the only one in his sights apparently. No, well, uh, he's used the same word Larry on uh, Carrie Wilson does. So now you've got something... In common with Caro. Look, I could handle it initially, but now being compared with Caro, I need a break, Damo. I need a break from you, and I need a break from uh, from media all round. Brownlow medal is tonight, and uh, who do you think is going to win it? Because you've uh, broken a story on a man who's very, very good at this. Uh, that, that's you're referring to Sean Brady, a big time punter who's declared Sam Mitchell, and he was long odds last week. He's been smashed in. I like Pendlebury. I just think he's been very consistent over 22 weeks, and it'll be him and Swan stealing votes from each other. But outside those two at Collingwood, I reckon uh, that's it. I'm going yourself. with your man, Sean. Yeah. Brady, I think he's right on the money. Uh, I think uh, Mitchell's form, uh, runner-up twice. You now look back at the year and think that he's been an absolute standout. Uh, you know, haven't been many midfielders that will take votes off him, despite Hawthorne's incredible year. They've won so many games and he would be a very worthy winner. Sam Mitchell, we wish him well tonight, Damon. That's all we've got time for with the Access Hilarious today. We'll be back next Monday to dissect all the issues from the grand final and review the big game. Make sure you join us then. Enjoy grand final week. Goodbye.